Good morning, welcome. You're looking tired. <laughs> like <laughs> Nikki said this morning you went in that job as the Obama. Yeah. Mm. Looking fresh. I know you're looking like Obama. <laughs> coming <the> way up. <laughs> well, Olympics right around the corner and you're looking tired. Huh. Uh, All right. I, I must admit there's some pressure. Yeah, yeah so there, there's a difficult one. There's uh-huh. a difficult mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Um well welcome. We we all know the story by now and the um the T- TTOC's uh, involvement in this whole fiasco. No, exactly. No. Oh, right. It's <laughs> a fiasco. <laughs> Um, but they said the TTOC's involvement in the fiasco. No, they, they're, they're not involved in the And that's what caused any problem for the <laughs> TTOC, right? Well, many people, you see, this is a new thing for people. Many yeah, people thinking true. that everything was under the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee. No, uh, but it's not. Uh, this is one of the sports, uh, uh, the feder- one of the federations under the, um, aside from the TTOC. And then, of course, everything falls under the umbrella. So let me know in terms of um, the federation. What is that relationship like? Because it, you know, it's not like all oh, this love up and thing in the night, no, plenty you know, kisses. Everybody have been asking that, but the, the, the challenge that the Olympic Committee will have is that we have forty-two member affiliates, each on their own thing. Mm-hmm. They each have their own autonomy. So at times it, it, it gets a little fractious in the sense that, but we have always tried to operate on the basis of um, you agree to agree disagreeably, and um, I don't know what people may feel, but but. It's, it's, it's part for the course. So uh, as far as the Olympic Committee mm-hmm. con- is concerned, we continue to have very close You try to work with everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is, of course, the, the, the challenge is always that um, when these things happen, you have to appreciate that, that you're going to be open to scrutiny. You, you know what I mean? There's a saying you can't play mass on free power. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's the challenge. And but what is your power over the, the sports bodies under you? Right. Ev- so does everyone have a different ruling? Or? Yeah, it's forty-two. It's, it's like wow. it's like it's like forty-two different independent businesses. Right. Right. And they come under the umbrella. The only time the Olympic Committee really has um what they call position authority rather than persuasive authority is for the games. So the Olympic Games, Pan Am Games, CAC Games, Commonwealth Games, Youth Olympic Games, Youth Commonwealth Games, the Olympic Committee has sole and exclusive authority. Mm. So, um, so, so, so that was what would have happened. Let me just say. Uh-huh. So everybody, if, you know, if, um, I've been coming in for some pounding. The Olympic Committee have been coming in some pounding. Understandably, because people feel emotional about it. The fact is that the lives of two young women, two, who, yeah. who have in common, as I was telling somebody this same morning, same dreams, same dream, and they're passionate and they love mm-hmm, their sport mm-hmm. and they have worked hard. But they have been let down by the adults. system. <laughs> the they system. by adults. And, yeah. and so it's very unfortunate. This is, this is one of the more difficult um, situations that the Olympic Committee would have had to deal with in its 70 years history. Not that we have not had situations such as this. So the jurisdiction for this matter would have, li- would have been squarely in the hands of the Trinidad and Tobago Gymnastics Federation and the International Federation for the Olympic Because I was going to ask you about that. How does this affect us on the international level? Mm-hmm. Meaning that uh, it's not just us and our problem, it's also affiliated with uh, FIG, which is the um, Federation of International right. Gymnastics. And uh, how does it affect, how do we look on the international map? How is this affecting us? Okay, so let me just, before, before I get to there, let me just clarify. So that, um, but once this spot has been decided, it now falls in the Olympic Committee's lap. And and the fig and fig as you call it, green fig, right fig, right, fig right. would uh, they now will write to the Olympic Committee. And from when that we receive that letter, we have two weeks to decide if we are going. Normally <coughs> we don't have these challenges because over the years we have built up such a collaborative relationship with like the entries, which has produced fourteen out of eighteen medals. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, swimming and cycling that we don't go through these kinds of tribulations anymore mm-hmm. because we work closely together. It's the first time for gymnastics, so uh, you know you have to give them some allowance for newness, so to speak. Um, so that Fig will then write to us, and then we will have to make a decision. Usually, we, so so far we have confirmed that we will participate in 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 the other sports, but it's well established. There's a, there's a little bit of a, a, a headache to put it mildly with this situation because um, we will have to act, and 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 it's further complicated for the Olympic Committee because. In the past, we may have been a little m- more laid back. and uh, Let them run their affairs. Let them in terms of and just say, okay, basically, I don't want to use the word rubber stamp, but say, okay, that's right, fine, we agree to it. Right. 
in the past, a couple of years ago, and then we were taken to the high court by an athlete because the games fell squarely in the hands of the Olympic uh, Committee. Mm -hmm. So we had to spend, we had to go to the high court. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have learned <coughs> from that experience. And then after that, we were taken to the Equal Opportunities Commission so that we understand that we have to take responsibility. The TTOC is in the hot seat and we can't duck and hide from it. But it, it, it. Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Should Tema give up hope? Is there any hope out of this situation for her representing Trinidad and Tobago? We know it's in illegal hands. Uh, many people not understanding the spot, mm -hmm. the spot of Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. um, we know that the spot was earned because of Thema uh, qualifying in Glasgow, etc. And a lot of people asking why the two athletes couldn't go. Um, and just want to explain to them usually how it works. If a, if a, a country doesn't have a team, correct, right. they are allowed one athlete one to athlete. represent mm -hmm. as a, and we do have a an gymnastics individual. Team. And we, right. we do have a gymnastics, which is really one, where you want to hope to Exactly, because that's what right. gymnastics is. It's yeah, a it's team, a team sport, mm -hmm. really. And, um, and then, of course, you, p you, you pick out all, all your, your your, your pretty ones, your good ones, your individuals to stand up. So a lot of people didn't understand that because that was the question. How come we can't send the two of them? They're so good. Uh, why we can't send? So that's the answer to that. But in terms of the spot, the spot was earned by Tamer. Of course, she didn't participate in the spot. Um, Marissa has come in now and qualified. If right. it is illegal hands, right. is there let, hope? Let me just clarify something. So the actual based on what the International Gymnastic Federation is saying, the qualification spot in Rio now is Marissa Dick. Um, the TTOC now will have to make a decision on the basis of when we examine all the facts. That's a separate issue. And what I'm saying is a separate issue. I'm not ducking and hiding. Is that there is a legal challenge on the way. On both sides. If, if it go either way, it can don't happen for both sides. So, so you, know, you know I like it, why the Olympic <laughs> Committee is in a very, yeah. a rock. If you ever thought about a rock and a real hard place. Because if you go this way, the other athletes, the lawyers I'll, I'll, could get involved correct, and vice versa. Correct, correct. Because they both have what they call it, law, a legitimate expectation. We don't know. We mean in the Olympic Committee, we don't know where the legal team will take it. Right. Um, the highest after you get through our system because most of the time in sport to be honest it, 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 it's very hard for a national court so a national court could deal with a, ma a you know I'm there, a, fee, a fee the pension <laughs> from the <laughs> legal person so let me just say that there's a court of arbitration of sport okay and uh, is that internationally that or is locally? international no no that's international uh -huh. they're the big guns and and they so can, can make, reach to there. They can make any declaration they could. And right. you, as the president no, of the TTOC, no, no, would have well, to listen forget to them. Forget me. I'm, I'm, in, in, this, in, in this instance, the Olympic Committee is a small fry. The International Federation and the International Olympic Committee will have to abide with whatever decision they make. Okay, right. so let me ask you this. If uh, the High Court or wherever it reaches decides um, contracts were broken, this was done illegally, what then? He can't answer that. It is irresponsible for me to respond <laughs> no, to that question that on the basis of legal advice. Nikki, oh God. But it when could happen. You know, if you, you know go to court Nikki, and the court and them yeah, say Nikki, when that was done illegally. Door, <laughs> you know, when you when just come into the door, I you tell talk you, go to show me the line. You talk to me nice, nice, nice. Yeah, nice, I was right? like, good morning, Brian. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, yeah. So, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh well, you wasn't expecting that. You wasn't expecting that. Well, with that being said, we understand that um, certain things, certain things he cannot discuss TNT Thank you very much, um, because it's in sensitive hands. But um, legal hands. That's, that's we know hands. that um, Nikki is very passionate about the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just asking a very simple question. Mm -hmm. If you call the MC, that, hey, what is the next step? <laughs> huh? Uh, something right? Anything? <laughs> the lawyers. <laughs> the, the I lawyers. find they're getting real good at that, you know. No, no, no listen, <laughs> listen. I know lawyers are put I in have that situation. To be honest, you see, this thing has real implication. I don't think people understand the implications, right? All right. And the lawyers said we to do, me, we do. senior counsel, Elton Prescott. Hey, Elton. And Elton, Elton and Dave William. <laughs> do not, they're very clear. Yeah, yeah, of right? course. Right, because this is not only local, this has international and, and the spotlight. I remember just the last week, the Olympic Committee play fast and signed a memorandum of understanding with the International Center for Sports Security, Europe, and the Sport Global Initiative 
And one of the things that we have done is that we have, we, have, we have opened ourselves to audit on our governance processes and systems. So now instead of, 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 of dealing with it on a local thing, we already have people looking to see how we're going to deal with this issue from a governance perspective. How do we deal with the outrage of the public calling for the TTGF um, resignation, the board? The TTOC can't comment on that. What what I what I what I I will say is that, in a very sincere way, I think that it is very important that all national sporting organisations understand that in the modern world, they are now accountable to the public and social. Very good, mm -hmm. very so good that, answer too. Because so they that. they receive taxpayers' dollars. Mm -hmm. Let's not pretend. Well, even if they did not receive, because not all this sporting organisations. That's right. Not all sporting organisations may receive the support that the public feels that they have, uh -huh. especially now in a downturn. Uh -huh. But even though we are essentially volunteers and, and like like myself, I Wait, you ain't getting paid for this pressure. Nah. For this pressure. Nah. We are not going to protest for you to get a little check from this boy. <laughs> not, not because they're taking some yes, yes from here, you know, Brian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. They ain't see sneakers even when you guys don't see why. I know, 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 see you see, hey, wait, people, no, nah, don't do me that. That's Adidas. Yeah, 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 Adidas. Right, 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 right. Adidas. Well, you remember the TTO seat partner is Adidas. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Adidas. So they set up your sneakers here. Hold on. Well, thank God for that, boy. You might not come in barefoot. You might not come in barefoot. <laughs> so, but because sports is such an emotional thing and people, it is. people buy into it and support and they like what has happened. I think that what has happened is that, and I mean, I know that even if they, they, they reprimand me, I would say this, right? So what you have here is a situation is that I don't think that the people of Trinidad and Tobago, including you, Nikki, have a don't like Marissa Dick. No. Right? Mm -hmm. No. It is that there is a feeling of a I sense of, out, of, of, of mm -hmm. outrage because there is a perception of an injustice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand Correct. what I'm saying? So, as administrators, although it is very difficult, so, I mean, I real people real bust up them out on me, you know, on, on thing. I mean, I say, but it's it, you not. Know, I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. <laughs> but you also have to not take it personal, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You have to step back and say, okay, is there something that I could have done to, 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 to avoid this? Well, I don't think people understand. And maybe and they're trying me, to I'm understand. About sport yes, I, I think people now understand the legal limitations mm -hmm. of what you and the Minister of Sport, sport too, because Correct. people have been calling, what is the Minister of Sport doing? Why is he not vocal? Why is he not involved? Where is Brian? And uh, I think people are now understanding the, so like the somebody legal tried to constraints. Me, right? They tell they said they were trying they, they tried to insult, to be honest. They said, um, so we're really saying the Olympic Committee is a toothless bulldog. Hmm. I said here yeah, the Olympic Committee essentially was a toothless bulldog up until Sunday. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Right? We were powerless. 